In the last couple of days, I've spent a few hours working on my Xmonad config, really just kind of playing around, having fun. I've been experimenting with some different Xmonad libraries, some that I've used before in the past, and some that are brand new to me that I wanted to check out. And one of those that I wanted to check out that I'd never used before was the Named Actions module that's available for you in Xmonad. And Named Actions, it's what you do is you add a named action to a key binding. Essentially, a named action is a description. So now, instead of having your key bindings as two values, the key binding and then the action it performs, you have three values. You have the key binding, then the named action or the description, and then the command that it actually runs. And then Xmonad takes all of your named actions, all of your descriptions, essentially, and you're able to pipe that into another program for displaying those key binding descriptions, those named actions. So the way I had been doing this before, I was actually just using a little bash script to get all of my Xmonad key bindings. So if I go down to my key bindings section, this is my old config before I started working on it this past week. Let me zoom in here a little bit so you guys can see this. I had this key binding here, uh, mod shift slash, which is really just mod question mark because shift slash is of course what you do to get a question mark so mod question mark it's kind of like a help command right and i have it pointing to this command here which is just a shell script that i wrote called xmonad underscore keys dot sh now let me actually open that file so let me go into my xmonad directory here and find that little shell script it's basically a sed command a sed statement well that's actually sed and grip a lot of sed and grip and what it does is it goes and finds this comment here this is just an arbitrary comment i added to my xmonad config start keys sed goes and finds that start keys i also at the very end of my key bindings have a end keys tag so it finds start keys and end keys and then it takes that entire block and then it grips and sets some stuff out to where now when I do mod question mark or mod shift slash, I get the output from that little shell script inside a YAD dialog box, or actually this is a text info box. So very simple little script. This was not complicated to do at all, but I wondered if there was a more Haskell kind of way to do this, a more Xmonad kind of way to do this without having to involve some third party shell script. And yes, there actually is. There is this library called xmonad.util.namedActions. So this is rather easy to get up and working. Let me zoom in a little bit here in the browser. All you need to do is in your config, of course, you need to import xmonad.util.namedActions, this library. You also need to be importing xmonad.util.easyconfig. You need to be using the easy config key bindings, which are the simplified way to write the key bindings, which I think most xmonad users probably use anyway. And then in your main block, you have main equals xmonad, and then you know all of the rest of the stuff behind that. You know your uh, settings for your mod key, and maybe maybe stuff about xmobar, yada yada yada. Somewhere in there, you need to add this section here, which is add describe keys, and then a key binding, and then my keys, which my keys should of course equal your uh, key binding block somewhere in your config. And you see you have to give it a key binding. In this case, it looks like they're going to set it to mod 4 mask and then the F1 key. So that's Alt F1 should bring up our list of key bindings displayed in whatever GUI program we want to display it in. And you see for the key binding for the add describe keys, it's not using the easy config key bindings. It's actually using the long form. So that's very important to know when you go to add this to your config. And then in your key bindings, for every key binding that you want to have displayed as part of the named actions, you need to go in and insert add name and then your message and then dollar sign and then the command for the key binding. So typically you wouldn't have this middle section here as part of your key binding. So you need to start adding add name whatever message, dollar sign, and then the name of the command. So let me show you this in my new config here. So let me show you the state of my current config and let me zoom in. I'm going to go down here to my key bindings section and you will see now this actually took me a couple of hours because I have so many key bindings. I had to add this add name 
portion to the key bindings. I also tried to space it so it's easier to read. So I did the ad name and then the description, and then I spaced over an equal amount of spacing for the dollar sign and then the commands that they actually run, just so it visually it stands out. You know, this is the key binding and the description, and these are the commands that they will run. I also had to change this block here, which before was my keys without any kind of argument. It didn't have this C argument. You have to have this C argument now, and you're gonna need to give it some kind of subtitle name. I called it custom keys. And I got all of this from the documentation, by the way, you will see. There is exactly what I have in my config on this line here. I went ahead and gave it a type. You don't have to. The Haskell compiler knows exactly what type it's looking at here, but I went ahead and just specified it just for my own sake so I knew what I was working with here. So once I had all of these add name descriptions for all of my key bindings, and I've got a lot of key bindings, <laughs> then I need to go down into the main block because remember we have to add uh, behind xmonad here dollar sign and then add describe keys yada 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 and give it a key binding I just stuck with the default which was a mod 4 mask f1 which mod 4 mask mod 4 mask is the super key mod 1 mask I believe is the alt key isn't it let's try it out so what I'm gonna do I'm gonna go ahead and write our new file and recompile xmonad and now let me restart xmonad and now if I do super f1 yeah, so this is the named actions, right? And you can see it is a little bit nicer formatting than my shell script. It does have some issues, though. I'll talk about that in just a second. By the way, this program that it opened in, this was, again, YAD, yet another dialogue. And you can actually change what program the named actions get piped into and displayed. Let me go back above my key bindings. I actually have this function here. Show key bindings x equals add name show key bindings io and then do this is a do block and essentially what are we doing with the piping named actions get piped into some program I'm piping it into yad with a text info style box and then I specify font foreground color background color it's centered in the screen I want a geometry of 1200 by 800 and I title the window X monad key binding so once again if I do super f1 and X mode bar while it's highlighted you'll see X monad uh, key bindings as the window title now we got the, of course the foreground colors the background colors yada 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 so that is the settings for yad but I could change that I could have used the old Zenity program. I, there's probably other things I could have piped this into, but yeah, it seems to be the standard, so that's what I'm going with here. Now, I mentioned there are some limitations to named actions, at least so far. I ha haven't worked out a way to actually break up these key bindings in a conventional sort of way, because these first groups of key bindings, these are not actually my key bindings. These are the default Xmonad key bindings. It goes ahead and displays those, and then at the end of the default Xmonad key bindings, you will see I have this new subtitle, custom keys. Remember I gave this subtitle, custom keys to my keys, that block there. So custom keys are all of the key bindings that I defined with their descriptions. It's just this one gigantic block of custom keys. I would like to be able to split that up into different groups because I don't want, you know, all 100, 200, whatever key bindings I have to be all in just one block under custom keys. I would like to split them up. Hey, these are key bindings for uh, switching workspaces. These are key bindings for window actions. These are all of my Emacs key bindings, yada, yada, yada. You know, I would like to be able to split that up, but I'm, I haven't worked out a way out for that. And I also do not want the default key bindings displayed because these are not key bindings that I set and in many cases I've actually overwritten some of these key bindings for example the default key binding to open a terminal in xmonad is mod shift return but in of course my config mod shift return launches dmenu right mod shift return so uh, so it actually is listing some key bindings that don't actually work and I don't know how to correct that, but I'm going to keep playing with named actions. I think it is a better way to go than the old shell script that I was using because I do want to eventually do as much using the traditional Haskell libraries rather than relying on third-party shell scripts for this. So eventually I want to clean this up to where 
this is a lot nicer and hopefully where it displays actually correct information where now you know the standard key bindings and the ones that I've overwritten myself both are displayed so it will actually I mentioned mod shift return launches a terminal according to the default key bindings but in the custom keys block somewhere in here I will have mod shift return right here and you can see for me that is our run prompt our dmenu prompt so I may need some of you Haskell pros to look through the source code for the for the named actions uh, here because yeah I'm I'm not I'm not able to to figure this one out. Let me kill that cocky again. The other Haskell library that I've been playing with, or Xmonad library that I've been playing with, is Grid Select. Now Grid Select is one I have played with a little bit in the past. I've actually made some videos about Grid Select of oh, three or four years ago. And I was revisiting it because I remember liking grid select a lot. So let me go to the top of my config because of course I have a table of contents here in my org document and I now have this section grid select. I, I've always had a grid select section to my Xmonad config, but I've really started doing some more stuff with it because I think it's a fascinating way to navigate your system. What is grid select? Well, it's where you specify some programs that you can launch, you know, with this grid like menu. And this is really cool. You can navigate it using HJKL, the traditional Vim keys, or the arrow keys. You can also do a search. For example, if I start searching for, I don't know, uh, Emacs, I can just do slash, the traditional way to search in Vim or evil mode in Emacs, slash, and then Emacs, right? I can just start typing or if I decided I, I typed something wrong I can backspace and I can eventually back out of it all the way or I can just hit escape and now I'm no longer searching I can just navigate again with HJKL and until I reach something I hit enter and it launches the program and looking at the source code for the grid select libraries I noticed all kinds of stuff I had never actually noticed before there's a lot of settings particularly you have these navigation settings which I never played with because the default navigation settings just using the Vim uh, key bindings HJKL just work and so do the arrow keys I never needed anything else but there's other things that you could set uh, actually, there's other things that are already set. Many people don't know because it's not obvious that they would be set. For example, I really didn't know you could search in the grid select until I noticed that they had actually had a default key binding for the slash key and it runs this command substring search my navigation. So that is actually the function when I hit slash and now I can start typing, you know, PC man FM, for example. And if I hit enter, it selects it. If I hit enter again, it actually opens it. Well, that's one annoying thing is you have to hit enter twice after doing the search where to me that doesn't really make any sense because doing the first enter really doesn't do anything because you can't back out of it you know if I do uh, slash PC man FM and hit enter to select it well I really can't unselect it because escape does nothing right it just cancels out the whole thing so really that first enter is useless it really just needs to be one enter and it launches the program I don't know if there's a way I can actually make that happen one of the really cool things you can do with the grid select is you can actually change the way you navigate around with the motion keys for example now I'm just using the standard HJKL and then of course up down left and right so you see that when you hit the left key it goes minus one and then zero those are XY coordinates so it moves left right and then H also does the exact same thing minus one zero so that's the standard Vim motion key for left and then you have right and L at one zero and then down and J at zero one and then up and K at zero minus one that kind of makes sense but I notice there's these other motion keys that we could use too if I go back to the web page for the grid select libraries they had this block of code here as an example I noticed they also had other than the standard motion keys they had uh, Y I N M and space as examples and they're moving two directions they're moving for example Y moves left and down at the same time I moves right and down at the same time yada 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 so I added some of these to my config now these aren't quite working right the only one that really works is in and I'll explain why that is in just a second but you'll see in moves minus one and plus one and this achieves a really neat effect so instead of moving H J K L like I'm doing J for down K for up watch what happens when I do in it moves 
down, right? And then in again moves you know, in, in a diagonal direction, right? It moves over one, up one, and then, you know, if, see if you can figure out what it's doing. It's circling the center, right? It's going in an ever-expanding diamond pattern. And that is just a really neat way to navigate a menu. I would have never thought of that myself. I'm actually going to use that. Now they also have a Y, I, and M, which are other variations on what N is doing, but those are not working for me at the moment. Or at the very least, it is not working in this version of grid select. This is a spawn selected command. So there's various uh, commands you can use to run a grid select kind of menu. I'm using spawn select to generate this menu and spawn select does not, uh, at least I haven't figured out a way to where it allows me to pick my own custom colors, my own custom key bindings. For example, I've set these custom colors and these custom key bindings, but these don't work with that spawn selected kind of grid menu. Uh, they work with like your window menus where I can have a grid select of all the windows open. So for example, if I run this key binding here, these are open windows that I have on my screen right now. And you see these are different colors. These are actually custom colors that I set here and of course that is also accessing I think these custom key bindings here where none of this customization that I have here actually works using spawn selected which generates the main programs menu so that is kind of unfortunate I haven't figured that out again you Haskell pros out there I may need your help to figure that one out and then kind of like I spent a couple of hours playing around with the named actions and adding descriptions to all of my key bindings I spent a couple of hours creating grid select menus because I didn't want just one gigantic grid select I wanted multiple grid select menus based on categories so I actually created a GS categories and then I created this list of tuples here for names and commands so I have this key binded to super alt C for category and you see those are the categories and what are the categories well the categories are these other tuples so GS accessories you can see I actually don't have an accessories category so that is a block I'm not even using I probably should just get rid of that I don't know why I added that so let me write and then restart, make sure everything works. Yeah, that was just an extra block I have because I have games and education. I have games and education here. They are out of order. So actually, let me put that in the correct order there. But you see, the very first grid select menu is a list of categories. And all it does is it runs xdo tool key and it does a key binding because I have the individual categories also on key binding, super alt and then one through eight. So if I do super alt one, that's the games category, right? Just a list of my games. If I do super alt two, that is the education category, super alt three. This is the internet category, yada, yada, yada. And if I just do super alt c that just gives me a list of the categories and now if i hit enter on internet it still <laughs> runs that command because it essentially presses the key binding with xdo tool to generate the gs internet array i hope that makes sense and of course how do i get the big group of key bindings that i have set to super alt enter well i have a key binding specifically to concatenate all of these individual lists so you see i have you know gs office gs settings gs system gs utilities and if i go back down here to my key bindings you will see the very first key binding super alt enter or you know mod mod one return that's how it's written in easy config it has the add name description and then it runs the command spawn selected and then you have to feed spawn selected a list well i feed it a bunch of lists so I do dollar sign and then I concatenate all of those category lists so that it creates one big list but again I can split it up if I only want the games or if I only want whatever this is probably system tools or if I want to just choose the categories myself if I forget the key bindings for the individual categories super alt C and then I could just navigate you know to the office category or whatever it is I am after so that's a little bit with what I've done with grid select and with named actions and I'm 
I spent a few hours on it, and again, I'm not happy with either one as they currently stand. I've pushed this to my personal dot .files config. This is not going to be part of DTOS until I can figure out some of the bugs, because right now, grid select, I need to be able to customize the colors, and I need to be able to customize the key bindings for the spawn select command, and I haven't figured that out. And for the named actions, I really need somebody to tell me how to create subgroups within those custom key bindings because right now it's all just one group and under one heading and I need to figure out a way to remove the default key bindings from the output produced by named actions. So you guys got any ideas let me know. You can let me know in the comments below but a better idea would be to open an issue on my GitLab and let me know the solutions. Now before I go, I need to thank a few special people. I need to thank the producers of this episode. Dustin, Gabe, James, Matt, Max, and Michael, Mitchell, Paul, Wes, Wanya, Bald, Omni, Allen, Armor Dragon, Chuck, Commander, Angry, Dayokai, Dylan, Marstrom, Erjan, Alexander, Peace, Arch, Medora, Polytech, Reality, Teats for Less, Red Prophet, Steven Tools, Devler, and Willie. These guys, they're my highest tiered patrons over on Patreon without these guys. This quick look at grid select and named actions in Xmonad would not have been possible. The show is also brought to you by each and every one of these fine ladies and gentlemen. All these names you're seeing on the screen, these are my supporters over on Patreon because I don't have any corporate sponsors. I'm sponsored by you guys, the community. If you like my work and want to see more videos about Xmonad, free and open source software, subscribe to DistroTube over on Patreon. Peace. This video is just me asking you guys to do my homework for me.